Hey, I need a haircut. What's up? It's Sculpture Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Proto Martyr album, Formal Growth in the Desert. So Proto Martyr, post-punk band from Detroit, Michigan, is back with a brand new album. And once again, I'm talking about it. And uh, needless to say, uh, at this point, if you've been following my channel for a while, you would know that Proto Martyr is literally one of my favorite bands ever. Uh, ever since they have released the album Relatives in Descent in 2017, uh, I pretty much fell in love with the band's music. Relatives in Descent is not only one of the uh, best albums of 2017 and one of the albums that got me into post-punk, but it also became one of my favorite albums of all times. I ended up giving Relatives in Descent a 10 out of 10. I think it's perfect. I enjoyed every single track, and I think if you haven't listened to it, you're really, really missing out. And even before Relatives in Descent, in the year 2015, they released The Agent Intellect, which is also a fantastic album with a set of really well-written, poetically lyrical, uh, catchy, yet icy and depressing tracks that I just really, really love. But following Relatives in Descent in the year 2020, they changed their style by a slight tad bit by moving towards a more art punk direction than your average moody, dirty post-punk with the release of Ultimate Success today, which uh, not everyone loved, but me personally, I think Ultimate Success Today is a really great album. It has a lot of great tracks, great singles, and it sees the band uh, optimizing their sound even more, adding to the versatility. And pretty much on this new album, Formal Growth in the Desert, Proto Martyr continues the same trajectory. Uh, again, less dirty, moody, post-punk, more art punk, art rock, which is really great. But also, unfortunately, I have to say, a lot of the tracks here on this album ended up a lot drabber and drier than I would have liked. The album opener, Make Way, is a slow burn intro with some really moody, desolate verses. The deserty guitars and the deep pitched vocals from Joe Casey describe a really dark, story which i really like and then that is interjected with these shouty choruses where joe casey just yells make way bam 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 make way and i think it's not a bad album opener but compared to everything else proto martyr had done before this is not really that great of an opener either i mean just listen to uh, a private understanding or uh, the opener of the agent intellect which is uh, The Devil and His Youth, fantastic openers that immediately plunge you into a dark, icy world. But this one just sort of meanders around, beats around the bushes a little bit. And then we have the track For Tomorrow, which I think is one of the worst tracks on the album. It is a pretty straightforward post-punk rager, and it pretty much continues from the last track, Make Way for tomorrow. Except, uh, yeah, this track lyrically is about modernity, but it doesn't really go nearly as deep as I would have liked it to be, and the verses and the choruses are barely any different. The melodies are kind of repetitive, and the track is uh, very passable in my opinion. Following that, we have Elimination Dances, which is one of the lead-up singles to the album, and also turns out to be one of my favorite singles of the year so far. I love the dark, murky guitar lines, the icy bass riffs, the groovy yet oddly rhythmic drums. Joe Casey busts out some of the most aggressive and flashy performances I've heard from the guy in a while. And this track is groovy yet simultaneously angering, especially with the lyrics uh, talking about uh, a very tired system of modern life. Overall, the track is fantastic and I find myself listening to this track again and again and again and again which is really cool but this track is almost like an oasis because the next few tracks is again just okay we have fun in high school and with the punchy drumsticks and droney intro uh, the track really doesn't get much beyond that uh, Joe Casey on this track almost cosplays an old grumpy boomer yelling at the younger generation which is very proto-martyr, but um, instrumentally, 
it lacks so much musicality that the track didn't really stand out. Though I have to say, I kind of like the outro. Then we have the track Let's Tip the Creator with the weepy guitars and the drumsticks return once again. This track musically is pretty great. It's reverby, dusty, moody. Uh, atmospherically, it's really great, but there's really not much beyond that. So I was a little disappointed. The track Graft vs. Host is a steady moving art rock track with 4-4 four, four time signature. But uh, yeah, the track sort of meanders around and doesn't really do much as well. We have the track 3800 Tigers where the track gets a little bit interesting with the fun distorted riffs and the sharp shrill guitars. And also lyrically, uh, this track is apparently about the Detroit Tigers, which is a baseball team and... Uh, the main character of the lyrics is, uh, or, or the person singing the lyrics, is a baseball coach yelling at a player, cheering him on to play even harder. And not only is that a really interesting sort of POV, but also uh, there's just something kind of funny and hideous and ironic about the story, which I really like. And the track after that, uh, Pola Acrylic's Kid, is also one of the highlights on the album, in my opinion. This is a tight-paced post-punk track with the apocalyptic sour guitar chords, almost kind of a throwback to the Asian intellect era proto-martyr. And I also really like the beautiful ascending guitars and the choruses. And the track ends off with uh, repeated refrains, can you hate yourself and still deserve love? Can you hate yourself and still deserve love? Which I think is a pretty, I wouldn't say insightful, but I would say a pretty provocative ending to the track. Fulfillment Center has the disorienting dense layers of guitars, um, but the track is like less than two minutes long. It's really brief. It doesn't really do anything beyond that. We Know the Rats is a slower drearier track with a more minimal instrumental. The soft pounding drums and the sour guitars are really nice, but it just stays that way. It's, it's just kind of stagnant. I can pretty much say the same thing for the next track, The Author, with, with its watery drums and brighter guitars. Joe Casey's delivery is a little bit more tongue-in-cheek, uh, but that's all I can say about the track. The album ends off with Rain Garden, where we get these multiple layers of dense guitars that are bitter and dreary and soft, and the lyrics showcase a man yearning for love, but also dealing with emptiness. While musically, I don't think it's nearly as catchy or as captivating as some of the best proto martyr stuff, but musically, it does portray a really uh, poetic and uh, picturesque picture. I also like the second half with the sporadic drumsticks and the droney instrumentals, which builds up to an epic climax. But yeah, overall, I have to say I am a little bit disappointed by this album. I love Proto Martyr's work, and they have been putting out amazing music for the last eight, nine years, but damn, this album really slowed things down. I'm giving the new Proto Martyr album, Formal Growth in the Desert, a 6 out of 10. So, have you listened to the new Proto Martyr album? Comments below, let me know, subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching. And um, I have so many albums to review up next. Uh, Foo Fighters, Snow Strippers, Bob Dylan, and much more.